What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching the Raging Nation Show. This is just a web series where we're talking about all things matter me in the world of upcoming films. In this episode, let's talk about Ghostbusters. I'm not talking about the classic film that everybody loves. I'm talking about Ghostbusters the reboot that everybody seems to hate. <laughs> I don't think everybody hates it. I think that a lot of people just think that it shouldn't be rebooted. They think that... You know what? If you want to watch a good Ghostbusters film, watch the original. And that's typically how everybody feels when it comes to reboots and remakes. Well, the reboot is actually happening. If you don't already know, it's filming right now in New York as we speak. Paul Feig is the director. And what I'm going to talk about in this episode is a couple of uh, photos that surfaced online. And what they are are things that the Ghostbusters use, the new Ghostbusters use, and specifically the vehicle that they drive, the proton packs, I'm talking about the new updated proton packs, and also the uniforms. So we're gonna talk about this and I'm gonna give you my thoughts about every single one of these items. First of all, let's take a look at the uniforms. The uniforms, very, very generic, jumpsuits, brown, Got an orange stripe there, and of course the Ghostbusters patch. So very generic, I didn't expect it to be that far out or that different. I didn't expect it to look, um, you know, 100% similar to the originals. I just expected it to be like any other reboot, an updated version. So that's what they are. And now let's take a look how it looks on Melissa McCarthy, okay? That's what it looks like on Melissa McCarthy. There is our Ghostbuster in uniform. And what she's missing is all her gear. Gear, rather. So let's take a look at the gear. Okay. So we have right here. This is the um, uh, the, the launcher, the, uh, the, the throttler, uh, <laughs> the, the, you know, the gun portion of the proton pack. Oh, what did they call it? They had a very specific name for it. The thrower. The thrower. There you go. So that's the thrower. It looks um, it looks very ghetto. It looks very ghetto looking. I thought the thrower in the uh, in the original looked better, but uh, I can see where they're going with this in terms of direction. Uh, it looks like something that they just put together. Some mad scientist in their team of four female Ghostbusters just whipped this up, and then there you have it. So that's what it is. Now here is the proton pack, and check this out. It's got a bunch of uh, schematics that are attached to this photo. It uh, gives you a bunch of uh, measurements and all that stuff, uh, such as the width and the height and all that. Uh, now, check this out. Here's a better look at the Proton Pack, and it has all these little schematic details. And they really put a lot of thought into this in terms of um, what every single thing does. It looks like every single thing in this Proton Pack is functional. So why does this have to be there? Well, it's here because it's the spectral RF feedback para parameter display. And why does this need to be there? Well, that's the liquid helium fill valve. So there has been quite a bit of thought put into this um, in terms of the science of how it works. So that's pretty cool. In the previous Ghostbuster, or rather the original Ghostbusters, they gave us a really brief description of how the things work but they didn't really explain everything and you know the 80s was a simpler time back then if you just tell us what it was we just bought it all right it's just like the the flux capacitor we just bought it all you had to do was give us a one or two sentence explanation and then you could travel through time but now audiences are smarter they ask a lot of questions if you don't have those ans those questions answered it's considered a plot hole and it and you know audiences are quite quite demanding so um, they <laughs> they require these answers to these questions and if you don't they will will slam your film all right so they have all this information here like the plasma ignition chamber high voltage rf feed and all that now let's take another look at the proton pack without all that stuff so here's a clearer look at the proton pack it's got a metal frame of course um, it's got what looks like a colander or a strainer, a metal strainer that you would use to strain like your vegetables in after you're done wash, washing them. So that's pretty interesting how they decide to do that. And that, that middle thing, the, that, that, um, circular thing looks like a, the drain of a, um, of a tile bathroom floor in a, like a public bathroom or like a change room at some swimming pool. So the last time I saw 
any um, any film production use a backpack like this was in the original Star Wars. If you look at the Sand Troopers backpacks, it had all kinds of parts, like vacuum cleaner parts, uh, a Tupperware. Uh, <laughs> it was actually, they were pretty resourceful uh, when putting together the backpacks. So this is the same sort of thing. They, they put together all these different parts. I'm sure one of their, the characters in the films is a crazy scientist and he's able to put all this stuff together, like an engineer type of character. All right, and this leads me to talk about the vehicles. And of course the classic vehicles is Ecto-1. Now, when I saw the photo of the new Ecto-1, it actually brought a smile to my face. Like this is really the first time where I really felt slightly positive about this film. Take a look at this. I'm actually gonna show you the back of the vehicle first. That's what it looks like. Looks like an old station wagon, which the original was. And it is in fact an old station wagon. <laughs> Check this out. This is um, an updated Ecto-1. It looks like the characters in, in the film, in the reboot, couldn't afford to buy a nice, you know, a sleek vehicle. So just like sticking with the classic film, they do what any, um, I guess, uh, broke scientists would have done and that is buy a used car buy an old used car and retrofit it with all these stuff <laughs> so there you have it there's Ecto-1 and it looks good in my opinion I actually really like this and this is the, the I guess the first little bit of faith that I have restored in the project for this reboot now check this out they don't just have one vehicle they have two vehicles and that is Ecto-2 check this out Ecto-2 happens to be a motorcycle, and I'm just looking at the motorcycle. Uh, looks like nothing too sleek. It's not like a Ducati or anything like that. Uh, this is just a really, really generic looking motorcycle. Um, it's got, uh, the, of course, the logo, and on the back, I'm not sure what it car they, they're they carrying in the back, but uh, it could be somebody's lunch. It looks like a delivery vehicle, of <laughs> delivery bike. But anyways, they got Ecto-1, they got Ecto-2, we got to look at the uh, the proton packs, and of course the uniforms. The question is, is the film going to be good? Well, here's what I really got to say about it. You know what, I feel the same way that everybody else feels, okay? The original is a classic, the second one had its moments, but of course the first one was the best. And you can't replace Ghostbusters with the reboot. And I would tell any of the new generation who want to watch a Ghostbusters film to watch the classic first before they decide to watch the reboot. The reboot, it will never ever be the definitive, definitive Ghostbusters film. It will always be the classic with Bill Murray and the rest of the gang. And well, I will say that my, my discontent for this reboot is kind of going towards more like, you know what? I'm a little bit more calm about it. I'm less angry. <laughs> I mean, you can only be angry so much. You don't want to be one of those guys that is just angry forever. And, you know, those 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 fanboys that just keep on saying, no, 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 this is all wrong. I boycott this film. You can't be one of those guys forever just because, you know, it's a very unhealthy attitude. All right. I'm not saying that I'm 100% positive about it, but at least I feel that the Ghostbusters original will always be the classic. Let them make their reboot, all right? I will go watch it. I'll see how it is, and I'll be completely honest about it. If it's good, then cool. If it's not, then I'll say that it's not. <laughs> but besides that, I'm really quite neutral to it. However, I did watch a, a Paul Feig film recently, and it was called Spy, and it's starring Melissa McCarthy, and I thought that that film was really really good it was really really funny and it was really clever I thought the comedy was very clever the the it it knows what it was and that is it's a very ridiculous spy comedy with in with a lot of ridiculous situations and Paul Fig he completely understood that he was completely aware about that for his film and I'm absolutely sure he's aware about what he's doing with Ghostbusters he's not trying to reinvent Ghostbusters what he's trying to do is just make a Ghostbusters or rather a film about these these ladies catching ghosts called Ghostbusters that's what he's really doing and let them do it <laughs> 
I will go watch this film. I'm actually looking forward to it more after seeing these photos as well as after seeing Spy. I feel that um, Paul Feig is a... Um, He's a good comedy director, and as long as the movie's entertaining, as long as it's fun, as long as I found, most, my, found myself laughing, then it can be a good film. And that's really all I gotta say about this movie. I mean, Melissa McCarthy was really, really funny in Spy, and I'm sure she's gonna bring her brand of humor to this film, and I think we're gonna have a good time. And for those that refuse to watch it, then don't watch it right uh, but for the rest of you with an open mind go right ahead and we'll see what happens I mean potentially they want to create a franchise out of this a franchise that'll cross over to 21 Jump Street and Men in Black which is kind of odd to me but Sony doesn't have a lot going for them since they lost their Spider-Man well they didn't lose the Spider-Man franchise they lent it to Marvel but anyways I don't want to go off topic these are my thoughts on the Ghostbusters reboot I posted all these photos on the Rage Nation Facebook page check out the album and if you want to look at uh, you know if you want to give a closer look at all these items you can comment on them and there you have it that's all I got to say in this video as always if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more hit the like button subscribe to the YouTube channel like me on Facebook the Rage Nation also follow me on Twitter at Rage Nation my name is Alex Yu thanks for watching I'll see you next time peace they weren't just good at all. I mean, they weren't. A, they they were they were bad. Okay, they weren't great. Okay, and I think that Brian Singer is the one.